Hello friends, welcome back to another session. Today's topic is what? Today's topic is what? Yes, you know. How do you get to know today's topic? Oh, from the title. So today's topic is living organism characteristics and habitats part 1. The part 2 and part 3 will be coming. So this is part 1. So let us start. So today's topic there is living organism characteristics and habitats. So let us start. Uh, now let's start. The different regions in the world have variety types of living creatures called organism. Mm, we have seen many many uh, animals in the zoo. If you have gone to zoo, you will be having seen the tiger, then the um, parrot, then the bear, zebra, uh, giraffe, polar bear. Polar bear not. Not the polar bear, then the lizard, then the eagle. You will be having seen so much, uh, so much animals in the zoo. So these different regions. So you have seen the animals, okay? But every animals will be not there in the one place. Every animals will be in the different place. So the different regions in the world have the various types of the living creatures. That is known as organism. That is known as organism. So an organism is simply different. Now you know uh, different regions have the different living creatures. So that is not uh, known as organism. So what is organism? That is called organism. So what is an organism? You know. So the organism is simply defined as any living thing. So any th living thing you see. That is organism. Ranging from the microscopic bacteria. Yes, you know microscopic bacteria. That is what? That is what? That is small. Right? Very, very small. And to the large elephant. Large elephant is what? Yes, that is big. Right? So, that is big. So, the microscopic bacteria to the large elephant and everything in between to Like, uh, microscopic bacteria is small and the large elephant is big and everything in between too. Okay? This small and this is big and everything in the between too. Now the different types of plants and animals. Now we will learn different uh, creatures, plants are uh, no, uh, found in the different places and that are known as organism. Then you learn what is organism. Now the different types of plants and animals. So in the plants and animals also there are so much types. Okay. So, they are found in different areas. Yes, I told you they are also found in different areas. Example is desert have camel, right? Desert have camel as animal and the cacti as plants. Desert have a camel as the animal and the cacti as the plants. Yes, and beaches show the coconut trees. Yes, coconut trees. They have the trees as the plants, okay? And the crabs as the uh, animal, okay? Animal. And uh, fishes, yes, fishes and other marine animals. Fishes and other marine animals inhabit the sea, right? They will be uh, in the sea and they will be swimming. So, fishes and other marine animals like uh, whales, whales, then uh, dolphins, then other animals like fish, they are found in the sea, okay? So, we see many things around us, right? Yes, we see many things around us. You can see beside me there is a poster. Then there are other things like sticky notepads and other things. So, which we can be grouped into two base, uh, two groups. Okay. We can divide it into two groups. One is living thing and one is non-living thing. One is living thing and one is non-living thing. There are two types. So, for example, men. Huh? Living thing. Dog. Living thing. Goat. Living thing. Cat. Living thing. Ants. Living thing. Plants. Living thing. Trees. Living thing. Etc. Or some of the living things. They are the living things. So now you will be having a doubt. Plants are living. Plants can. Uh, they are living or not. So what are the characteristic living organisms will be having. First one is they will grow. Right. First one is they will grow. Then they will uh, reproduce. They will uh, reproduce. Then. Other things like uh, their response to stimuli and other things. So plants, they grow. Then they reproduce. But they do not move. Yes. They have, they, are, they grow and they reproduce. But they do not move. So they, they have the two properties. That's why they are called living things. Okay. 
and etc so they are the living things okay don't get confused these are the living things like lion then giraffe then an uh, elephant then black panther then the hippopotamus then the uh, cheetah then the tiger then the lion then the wolf then the dog and uh, white tiger okay now adaptation now comes the adaptation so the presence of some specific features okay specific important this uh, presence of the specific features and certain habitat sorry habits which allow an organism which allow an organism to live in its habitat is called adaptation so to live in habitat uh, the presence of some specific features and the certain habits they are the habitats so organisms show adaptation according to their habitat so the organisms show adaptation according to their habitat for that i will tell you an example think that uh, we are born in india okay we are born in india in a summer region sorry summer season or in a uh, very very high temperature region okay and after we uh, we are born there uh, if we go to some antarctic sorry arctic region if we go to arctic region there it will be very cold right so uh, you will be very happy oh arctic very very cold then snow and everything but that will be only there for two or three days after three days you will be feeling like i want to go back to home i want to go back to home i want to see my mother mother and father will be with you but uh, uh, we can't leave there so much days because that adaptation is not uh, that habitat is not good for us because we we'll, uh, be born in the uh, in the summer places or the hot uh, places and we hot places and we are living in the cold place so it will be not uh, we will be not able to live there so after two to three days you will tell oh, i want to go to home i want to go to home so you'll be like that uh, now comes the habitat and other example yes deserts the camel so the camel if you bring to the uh, bring to here bring to our place or uh, in our home something uh, they will leave okay they will leave but they will be not good for our adaptation they will be not good for our adaptation okay they will be like oh, i don't want to leave there but they will leave they will not die okay now the habitat now what's hand habitat so the surrounding in which living beings lives is known as habitat so what is habitat the surrounding in which living beings live so this is an habitat uh, my father lives my mother lives here and the other persons uh, near my home like uh, other homes there will be so much persons right uh, near near our home only there will be some other homes uh, in this karnataka in uh, for us in the kerala it, there will be so much places to play right in our home in the front there will be so much places but here it is not like that there will be only lit the, the uh, I, let me show it for you if this is the home okay and this is the door uh, there is only this much space in the kerala and all there will be this much uh, surrounding space it will be there but here only this much space and after that in front it is road in front directly it is road so there is no place to play or something so our home is our habitat okay our home is our habitat uh, if someone takes to other place we will be not able to live we will be able to live but uh, we will be not liking it okay so what is the habitat for squirrel for the squirrel the habitat is tree okay now let's move on now are the types of habitat uh, now we learned habitat now there are two types uh, there are so much not so much there are two types what are they do you know what are they do you know yes it is one is terrestrial habitat and one is aquatic habitat this is the terrestrial habitat this is the terrestrial habitat and this is the aquatic habitat so by seeing this picture and marking what can you understand from this what can you understand from this yes this they are living in the land right 
they are living in the land and this they are living in the water this they are living in the land and this they are living in the water now comes the terrestrial habitat now let's talk about the terrestrial habitat so the habitat that on the land is known as terrestrial habitat i told you the habitat which any habitat that is on the land is known as terrestrial habitat so the terrestrial habitat can be further categorized ah sir the okay i agree terrestrial habitat but they can be further categorized ah already from habitats they have divided into two that one is aquatic and one is terrestrial and from terrestrial further they are dividing and from that further dividing they further reverse or not hmm doubt so everything is will be clarified so the terrestrial habitat can be further categorized as forest grassland also uh, savannas you know right in the sixth standard if you are uh, if you have passed in the sixth standard or if you are in the sixth standard you will be knowing savannas other name for grasslands and coastal mountain yes now that comes the coastal mountain and desert habitats so these are the habit terrestrial habitats okay uh, uh this elephant live in the jungle uh giraffe live in the land live in the jungle and zebra live in the jungle then hippopotamus everyone live in the jungle right now comes the aquatic habitat what are aquatic habitat so the habitat which is in the water any habitat that is in the water that is known as aquatic habitat any habitat that is in the water that is known as aquatic habitat and aquatic habitat can be further categorized uh, aquatic habitat can be further categorized as ocean hmm ocean you know right we will go to ocean and we will stand we will play i have gone to ocean many 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 times and i will be playing like uh, the waves will be hitting and sometimes what happen you know i am a good swimmer okay uh, i know to swim and underwater i can stay underwater for one minute okay so while staying in the underwater uh, some they will close the eyes right we should close the eyes eh? or if we want to open the eyes we will put the goals right goals here and they will be tight to our uh, eyes and we can see through that we can open our eyes but i am not like that i am what i will do is directly i will go to underwater this is not fake this is real i will go to underwater and i can open my eyes and i can open my eyes and i can see everything in underwater and i will swim not clearly i can see almost everything and i can swim by looking the direction underwater and if there is some fishes not fishes some wasters or some green green things will be there uh, that if something is there i can put away and i can swim through underwater so i know swimming underwater and i can see through underwater uh, now comes the rivers you will be having you will be have seen the rivers right um i don't think so rivers you can see right yeah I, i have seen or not i don't remember uh lakes lake i have seen uh near my home from uh, i think 6 or 7 or 8 km if i go i will get a lake and pond yes some people should be having pond in their home some people will be having pond in their home my mother's father grandfather uh, have the pond in their home my mother's home there is pond pond okay and whenever i go there i'll be in my father's house father uh, grandfather house father's father's house so when i will go to my uh, mother house okay when i will go to my mother house uh, i used to bath right we everyone will bath but the only except night everything i will jump directly into the uh, directly into the pond and i will bath and come but uh, when i am here I, there is no pond and i can't jump Directly, it will be some. I don't know. Uh, it is very deep. Uh, if we jump, the water will be only half. Okay, it is the uh, okay half. Half there will be water, and that half there is so much deep. Uh, like there is so much deep inside, and I can go inside. Uh, okay, I will go inside, and I will open my eyes, and I will swim everything. Uh, okay, so that will be very, very, very nice. if you have pond or tell your father to make a pond 
tell your father or mother to make a pond in your home like you can buy the mini swimming pool it will be very nice if you have pond um, how was the pond it will be very nice to bathe in it comment down below how was it and now comes the swamps that is also an aquatic habitat here you can see this is the ocean i think so yes it is the ocean and here is also but these are these things are in the uh, water right that's why they are known as aquatic habitat okay now comes the components of habitat so there are two main components of habitat okay biotic abiotic biotic means living right biotic means uh, living and abiotic means non living non living okay now biotic component biotic component the living beings make biotic component so the living beings make the biotic component i told you plants and animals are the examples of biotic component yes plants are growing but they cannot move that's only their uh, demerit but uh, they can they will grow right that's why they are biotic ah uh, now comes the abiotic component so the non living things make the bi uh, abiotic right non living things make the abiotic component of the habitat so the soil uh, abiotic air non living water non living temperature non living are the abiotic components because they are not living and abiotic components provide the necessary raw materials are con and condition for the living beings to survive yes ball yes now comes the ball let me mark it for you yes ball uh, i love sports and my favorite is football uh, i will play nicely football and i love football okay uh, and uh, pen now comes the pen pen we will use for writing if you are student you will use the pen to write right right and eraser if something uh, some mistake came what you will do you will erase it and car chair this is chair not the car okay that's the chair you will use to sit right right so uh, now let's move let's look this this is abiotic or biotic let me mark it for you are you ready it's the thing for you so i will write a b for non living and b for uh, living okay a b means abiotic and b means biotic so this is b biotic this is a b this is a b this is b biotic this is a biotic this is biotic this is a biotic and this is not house it is horse okay so this is biotic okay this is a biotic and this is biotic now let's move on uh, for example most of the plants need soil for anthropogenesis yes for example most of the plants need not for example plants need soil for anthropogenesis and moreover soil also provides them with water and necessary minerals yes they provide uh, like for water water is necessary so how the soil provides the water yes for if rain come okay rain coming okay and the water hits on the land and where the water goes it will go and it will seeps it seeps into the soil okay it seeps into the soil and it will be in underground and the soil can provide water for growth of the trees so most of the terrestrial animals yes most of the terrestrial animals live on soil um for example earthworm uh, let me write it for you want should i write it okay earthworm earthworm it is e a r t h not e e a r t h so let's move on so similarly water and air are necessary for living beings to survive yes water to drink without water without food only by drinking water you can survive you can survive but by without water only food you can't survive okay air air is very necessary if we don't get air what will it will happen we will die because air is necessary for every living organism right 
so the every living organism need the water and air to grow and evolve and do other things any other activities now let's move on now comes the terrestrial habitat so it refers to the land where all plants and animals live yes land land habitat is known as terrestrial right land habitat is known as terrestrial and animals and plants which we which live on the land are called terrestrial animals animals which live on the land is known as terrestrial animals and terrestrial plants ah uh. what are the plants living in the land known as what are the plants living in the land known as yes it is terrestrial what are the animals living in uh, the living in the land known as they are terrestrial animals so the you should add terrestrial that's all plants terrestrial plants animals terrestrial animals now comes the forest ha forest habitat forest is one kind of the terrestrial habitat right terrestrial habitat so now let's move on so the forest and woodland are the places where we get mostly trees where, are, where there are mostly trees yes forest will be covered with trees right and other animals uh, now let me tell you so forest uh, you will be some papers will be seen for us it will be like fully plants trees and everything okay so there are mostly trees and uh, there will be butterflies are uh, they will be nice and there will be birds too there will be, be birds too and they will sit on the the tree and kokareko sorry not kokareko ko 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 some sound they will make and the hen the uh, sorry hen uh, the ko kokareko ko the it is nice to hear they will be in our home too yes cock there will be they will be in our home too some people should be having in their home so there are many different kinds of forest in different climates yes if you are thinking only there is one type of forest there are different types of forest okay now the but the trees uh, trees are the one thing they have in common but they have they have the different types of forest but the trees only the trees are the common they have okay now the forest provide everything that the creature who live there need yes their habitat will be that so they will be adapted to that habitat what to do so the forest provide everything that to the creature who live there need they need food water and shelter right forest can provide shelter by plants right and after rain or something from the plants or trees again the water will be falling and water will be there and here you can see there are so much water and food yes food like uh, there will be so much mango tree and other trees from there you will get food right so the forest can be hot and cold to her will be thinking uh, there are so many how there are so much trees they will be too much cold right we will go to a trip they can be hot too okay they can be hot too with different kind of trees okay they, they have the different kind of trees every tree will be not available in every climate and the types of forest are one is deciduous forest one is coniferous forest and one is rain forest there are three okay I, there are other two like uh, what evergreen forest okay evergreen forest this and uh, no, let's move on now, now comes the raccoons so raccoons live in forest so they live in forest and among other places too and raccoons often make their dens in the trees they make their dens in the trees can, here can you notice the raccoon i'm marking for you so they sleep during the day yes they sleep during the day and move around at the night uh, you know some animals which they do like that yes out then bat so they eat almost anything anything including plants plants will get in the forest like this then bugs there will be insects and other things they will eat it and small animals yes they are this much small and their mouth is this much small so they can't eat big animals like small animals like I think I don't know. Uh, I will tell you an example. A lizard, small animal, right? 
Now the babies, yes. There are those babies are born in the spring season. Okay. And after a few months begin going out at the night with their mothers. Yes. They, uh, I told you they will sleep at the uh, day and they will go out at the night. After few months they are born. After few months, not few years. After few months they are born. They will begin going night. Okay. With their mothers, not alone. With their mothers. And she teaches she teaches them how to feed themselves yes they have if they want to survive they should only collect the food and they should only eat so the mother teaches how to do that and the mother teaches how to stay safe from the other animals like a lion so they remain with her with her for many months so they remain with her for many months and raccoons are an important part of forest habitat they are the important okay they are the important part of the forest habitat see can you see here now comes the grasslands savanna savanna ah you have heard savanna somewhere right ah in the sixth standard mm, sixth or fifth i don't know i learned it uh, now i am in seventh um sixth or fifth i don't know my uh, teacher was teaching it um grasslands are also known as savannas while learning i think the Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn, Equator, everything we were learning that time, the teacher was telling this. I don't know why. I forget it. And uh, now let's move on. So many animals live in grasslands. Yes. Many animals which live, they will be found many, many, they are found in the grasslands and in the forest too. But many are found in the grasslands. But the climate is warm. The climate is warm and the food is available in the good amount. That's why because of the heavy population, there will be heavy population because the food and warm that is available in the good amount, the competition for food and other resources is tough in the grasslands and forest. Now let's take an example of some animals to understand adaptation for grassland. Yes, uh, tiger, tiger, they, will, they are carnivores, right? They are carnivores. And they will eat the flesh of the other animals, right? They will eat the flesh of the other animals. Now, let's move on. Now, let's look at the lion. So, a lion is a ferocious hunter. And it is strong because of the muscular body. Yes, they have the muscular body. So, the lion is ferocious hunter. And they have the muscular body. So, the sharp claws. They have the sharp claws of the lion help them killing the prey. Yes. <laughs> They will be doing and they will be killing the prey. So they have the sharp claws for lions. They help them killing the prey. So their claws retract inside when they are running. And the lion can walk without making noise. Yes. What the lion do? What the lion do you know? What the lion do is. They will be slowly coming. If this is the prey. Think this is a prey. They will be slowly coming. Okay. And they will be attacking. So that's how the lion attacks. Now let me keep it here. Uh, now the they these clothes clothes retract inside when they are running, and the color of the lion pale yellow, which mixes with the color of the grass and rock. That's the body color lion helps keeping hiding from the prey. You see the uh, this color, right? The color of the lion is this color, and the color of the grass. They are almost the same. So, if the lion is sitting in the grass, if the lion is sitting in the grass, this color and this color will mix. Okay. This color and this color will mix. The lion's color and the grass color will mix. And uh, the lion can hide it. Now comes the tiger. Ah, tiger and lion competition. Tiger will be telling, hey lion, I am the very hunter. If you are the king also, I am the very good hunter. The lion will be telling. Hey, go, go. I am the king and every uh, animals will serve me and if I want I can hunt. Mm. Competition, competition. So it is the tiger is also a good hunter as the lion. Okay. So the black strips on the body of the tiger look like the grasses to its prey. Okay. So this uh, grass, okay, this grass and this tiger, they almost look same and they mix and the lion, uh, tiger can also hide like a Lion. Tiger can also hide like lion because the their skin and the grass color is almost same. Now to the deer. Uh, deer is the predator, 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 predator. So what they do is the lion will be coming to the deer. 
the land will eat dear. Ah, let me tell you that. Uh, with my mother's father, like grandfather, uh, he will be seeing the animals program. Okay, so how it will be means animals attacking both. Like lion attacking the deer, then deer attacking the some other animals like us. Okay, so it will be like that. My grandfather is very interested in that, and I will uh, when I am going to the my mother's house. In my mother's house, my grandfather will be there, my mother's father. And uh, when I am going to there, he will be seeing that. Uh, um, he will be seeing that my uh, program. Okay. And he'll be see, looking at it, and you will be very concentrated. So I have seen it very time, many times, and the lion attacking the deer, and it can sprint very fast. Yes, I noticed that that the deer can run, deer can run very fast if the lion is coming to attack and save its life from the predator. But they have the good hearing ability. See, their ears are thus at the side of the eyes. Okay. So that can uh, hear the sound of the approaching predator, and he, that can understand with the before it comes near it. The eyes of the deer. Okay, this I have told you. Now let's uh, the predator coming from behind. It can understand through its ears. Okay. Now let's move on the deserts. Yes, adaptation in camel. Ah, uh, camel are synonymous with hot desert. I told you. If you bring camel to the land, if you bring camel to the land, it will survive. It will not die. Okay, it will not die. But it will be not good with our habitat because they are born in the desert. They are born in the desert, and if we bring it to our city or something, they will not die. But they will survive. But uh, they will be not taking it. So adaptation which help them to live in the hot desert. They have the adaptation that helps them live in the hot desert. That are they have the padded feet of the camel. Okay, they have the padded feet, or uh, that easily walking on the sand. That helps them easily walking on the sand. Okay, and the camel has long eyelashes. Yes, they has long eyelashes that prevent sand. Yes, from the sand we, to prevent getting to the eyes, they have the uh, big eyelashes. Okay. And a camel can drink lots of water. Yes, they can drink the lots of water and they can store it because uh, in the desert there will be less rainfall, right? Less rainfall. Okay, okay, wait one minute, one minute, guys. So there will be less rainfall, right? There will be less rainfall, and the camel will store the water for so much days, right? Because there will be so uh, there will be no water for so much days. That's why camel will store the water for so much days. Okay. Now uh, let's move on. Uh, so the a camel can drink lots of water, and uh, now they have the hub too. That I will explain you. So the camel produces dry dung and very little urine. Very little urine to save water. Hmm. Very little urine to save water. Funny. So very little urine to save water. So the small creatures living in the deserts have hard scales on their body, which prevent uh, the preventing the loss due uh, loss of water due to the heat. Uh, due to the heat, the water will be evaporating, right? So the hard scales prevent that, right? You know the water cycle, right? From the lakes, ponds, everything, the water will be evaporating, and it will condense at the door, and it will come down precipitation as rain, right? So now let's move on and other adaptation, very very important adaptation. They have the hump. So hump stores what? Hump stores what? Hump stores what? Water? No, no, no. They stores fat. Okay, they stores fat. So the animals like rats and snakes stay in burrows to gang. Uh, deep into the sand to stay away from the intense heat during the day so uh, in the sand they will dig big big burrows and they will hide it the hide the anyhow the uh, sunlight is directly hitting the land the upper surface will be very hot surface will be very hot so they will dig the burrow deep into the soil and they will be hiding there so these creatures usually hide in the shadow during the daytime and coming out during the night right
So now comes the desert plants. What are the desert plants? Yes, what is this? This is cactus. So the desert plants have very deep roots so they can access water from the great depths. Because there will be less rainfall in the desert so they can access the water but because they have the deep uh, root. And the leaves of some desert plant are modified into spine-like structures because the water loss will be there. Water loss is known as transpiration. So the water loss will be there due to the heat. So to prevent that, the leaf are modified as spines. Leaf are modified as spines. Sorry, sorry. Now let's move on. Now the stems of the some deserts are modified into leaf-like structures. Yes, you can see this leaf-like structure, right? Huh. This is leaf. This is leaf. No, 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 no. So this is stem. Okay. So these such stem are spongy. Ah, they are spongy and they have a waxy coating. Yes, to prevent the uh, evaporation. Evaporation, water loss. They will be evaporating. Water will be evaporating and going up. So are the spongy inside is storing? Yes. So the spongy inside. Yes, I told it. They will be like spongy. So the spongy inside allows them to store the water. Okay. Now comes the mountain region. So these habits are normally very cold and windy. Yes. Because the, the, they are so much uh, upset. And in this area snowfall may take place in the winter. Because in the winter it will be much cold and the snow will be falling. Ah, ah. So it is very nice to see. I think so. I haven't experienced really. And there are large variety of plants and animals so there are large variety of plants and animals living in the mountain region uh, like yak so let first first let me talk about trees then we will come to the animals so if you live in a mountain region or have visited one you may have seen large number of such trees so these trees are normally cone shaped yes so they will be like this the root will be going then the plant, uh, tree will start it will be like this and it will go like this so they have a sloping branches okay the leaves of the some trees are like needle ah, i told you right so this helps the rainwater snow of slide, uh, slide easily so they have the slopey surface so when the snow or rainwater come they will slide to the down easily okay so there could be trees with shapes different they will be there will be different uh, shapes um, of the trees in the present in the mountain okay now comes the animal i told you Animals living in the mountain region are also adapted to conditions there. They are adapted to conditions there. Okay. So they have thick skin or fur to protect them from cold. Yes, it will be freezing cold like 0 degree. Okay. Minus degree. So that time. Okay. That time the yaks and snow leopard. They will be having thick fur to protect from the cold and for example yak. They have the long hair. Okay. They have the long hair. And to keep them warm. And snow leopard has thick fur. So the snow leopard has thick fur on its body. And including feet and toes. Yes. Feet. Uh, including feet and toes too. Now let's move on. So this protects its feet from the cold when it walks on the snow. Yes. When it walks on the snow. It will be going inside of the snow the legs so that's why it protects it and the mountain goat yes mountain goat here it's there and has a strong hose for running up on up the slopey slopey surfaces sorry slowly sorry slopey surfaces so they have the hooves to stay in the grip and climb the mountain so as we go up the mountain region the surrounding changes and it will become very cold okay now comes the polar habit. Yes, polar habit are located at the very top and very bottom. If this is the earth, here it will be Arctic. Okay. And at the down, it will be Antarctic. Okay. This part, it will be Antarctic. So, bottom of the, so they are very cold. Okay. Very, very cold. They are not cold. Very, very, very cold. So, we did and have a lot of snow and ice. They have a lot of snow. Here you can see, right? So, it's too cold for trees to grow. But there are some plants such as moss and lichen in Tundra region. Okay? Now, most are carnivores. What are carnivores? They uh, eat the flesh of the other animals. Because 
there is lack of plants there are not some there are not much plants because there are too much cold right so the plants cannot live okay okay some plants can plants cannot live so that's why due to the lack of the plants there are no herbivores and omnivores so snow caves or holes for shelter so the animal mostly carnivore have a thick fur on to survive to the cold yes here you can see the uh, penguins and some blend in ice and some may hibernate in the coldest months um mm, hibernate you have heard somewhere right yes where you have heard hibernate if you have pc or laptop you will be having the word hibernate right because hibernate when you are going to shut down your laptop or computer there will be so much uh, options right sleep hibernate then shut down restart so the examples are polar bear and reindeers penguins here you can see an animal hiding here ah he's not noticeable for you right i told you so give me a high five high five and uh, so that's an animal hiding there to protect from the cold and uh, rainforest now comes the rainforest so this habitat receives lot of rain this habitat receives lot of rain so it is rich in animal life right because animals like mammals amphibians reptiles all sort of animals are found here because of the lot of rain okay now the climate is hot and humid and animals have to learn the to adapt to survive so to survive here they have to learn and they have to adapt to the environment to survive so that's all for today's session and how was this session how was this session guys so if you like this session like share and subscribe to the channel and see you in the next session with an amazing topic not amazing topic the living organism characteristics and habitat part 2 so bye